Welcome to Pokeblock number 42. We're gonna do something different for these next four vlogs. It's all gonna be one three. We're gonna see how our hourly will be solely playing one three, and this is gonna add everything. It's gonna be playing, promotions. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the comps I get with food and uh, everything together. I just wanna see if I can make a living and playing one three, what would my hourly be? Of course, it's one month, so it doesn't guarantee for sure that's my hourly because it's a very small amount of hours, but you know, it'll give us an idea. And I want to know that it was a mix things. One reason I'm just running really bad. Um, these last six months have not been great. I was up last month. I'm, I was only down one month, but the profit's been pretty low. Thankfully, I'm getting other sources of income right now because if not, I'd be screwed <laughs> because there's no way I could sustain, you know, if I was on my own, but I got, I got three daughters now. Um, so decided to take this opportunity that I'm running so bad to uh, grind 1-3 and see how it goes. I feel a lot of people that watch this play 1-3. So maybe they have an idea if they want to uh, start, if they could actually make a decent hourly. Of course, every casino is different. I'm going to add everything. The plane, promotions. I'm talking about the food I get. Like uh, just kind of taking advantage of promotions that the casino gives. So with all that said, let's head in. Let's play. I'm feeling good about today. Let's hopefully run good and uh we'll talk about it after all right let's play some one through head into the poker room hopefully we could get started the month with a good hourly i buy in for three hundred dollars i get two extra just in case i need to add on let's head over to the table and jump right into the first hand that not the best but yeah it's to be expected when we are showing every hand 10 six off next hand is definitely prettier king nine suited when under the gun but seven hand i think is good enough so maybe twelve dollars now the low jack three bits to 35 and yeah, three bets in one three looks really strong, but when the small line calls as well, now we're getting a pretty good price. And I feel like three ways, the low jack will play a lot more straight up. So we'll have more chances to realize our equity with our suited hand. And hopefully we just flop trips. I call flop, sadly, not much going on for us. 10, seven, three. So when I check low jack bets $40, this just looked like what I was expecting three bets to be in one three uh, over pair. So I just fold. Moving on, 10-6 suited in the big line, but this straddle is going on. Low jack calls, and yeah, I don't think this is good enough to raise, but for $3, happy to see a flop. So I call, button checks, flop 776. Checks at a button, he bets $15, and I bold. Let's move on to the small blind, 6-9 off, 8-3 off, 10-4, 10-5 off, and now we got a pocket pair, and one of our favorite ones, pocket three in the low jack. It's one of my favorite ones because I used to play basketball with number 33. So it does feel like higher chances to hit a set because it's our favorite number, even though I know deep down that it's not true. But let's stay positive. Under that makes it $18. That was definitely a little annoying since the usual race size is 12, sometimes 10, sometimes 15. But 18 is on a bigger side. So he's making set mining for us less profitable. And you're in a spa and you're not sure if you should set mine and not. To make it profitable, you have to be able to win 15x whatever the raise is so he made it $18 I've got to make at least the possibility of 270 and we do have more than that both of us so let's do it I do call and so does a hijack and cutoff so three ways to a flop will we flop a set with our favorite hand we do flop come six three nine we flop bottom set let's go under the gun gives us the good news when he does not slow down he bets thirty dollars and this definitely looks strong super multi-way and a big size pre-flop and i don't want to slow play this one thing it's not that i'm scared that someone will hit a draw that is the case as well but if i just call and he has an over pair and a spade comes in or a nine or just scary cards maybe i won't be able to get it all in but on the flop this is a time that the board is less scary less hands he loses against with overpair so we're not going to slow play i make it 80 dollars falls back to him and he calls turn is a deuce that is beautiful it's a brick and i don't even have to think about what size i want to bet he does all the work for us he just rips it all in himself 155 dollars i call of course and he shows the beautiful news when he flips over king nine suited so he is drawing dead that is always a nice sight to see so river is an eight 
and we will scoop this part and just like that we just started and we're already up 248 dollars definitely feels great to start strong like this but let's focus there's plenty of time to go let's move on three do suited six seven off now in a big blend with ace ten off under three down makes it three dollars falls back to me and sometimes players between us since if i just check and see a flop the houses take all of the money so you just ask them hey i'll raise you full and i just give you the money back so we just chop it up so i asked him and he said no so the fact that he said no it just felt like his hand was pretty strong i wasn't loving it but i didn't want to just check because the house will be taking all the money so i decided just to make it ten dollars that usually if i'd be raising for value i'd make it 15 but i decided to make it a little smaller since i wasn't loving my hand and indeed he does call flop eight nine three so we don't hit but two of the cards back to a straight draw i think it's good enough to bet so i make it ten dollars and he calls Turns to three, that definitely feels like one of the worst cards to be betting on. Um, any over card, a seven, I'd be betting. And again, the fact that they wanted chop felt like he could be pretty strong. So I decided to check. He checks back, reverse a deuce. And yeah, not a bluffing card. And after checking the turn, I don't know if I'm getting anything that hit the board to fold. So I check, he checks back. And indeed, he was pretty strong with ace jack suited. So he'll take it down 10 8 suited we fold it since someone raises ace 5 off king 9 off and now we are in the hijack with pocket sixes under the two limps and make it 15 dollars will we be able to hit a set twice let's see we get the cut off and under the two to call a flop no six but it's four deuce three so definitely with pocket sixes having an overpair to the board is above average and we have a gut shot when it checks to us let's see bet i make it twenty dollars and they fold so i'll take it moving on to jack three off ten seven off queen nine off queen six off now in a big line with queen four off limps around so i see a free flop but we miss so when someone bets i just fold now we're in the small blind with king queen off there's five limpers so let's raise it up big i make it 35 dollars big blind calls now to cut off jams but just 42 dollars and yeah all i can do here is call since his jam is seven dollars more than my raise and it'd have to be at least 32 dollars more so of course not folding so i call so does the big blind and he just has 40 dollars behind flop eight deuce ace so nothing going on for us but it's, thankfully when i check Big run checks back, turn is a nine, check, check, over is a three, check, check. And we were in an amazing place, but sadly, the big blend has queen nine suited. So he hits a nine on the turn. That is good. So the cutoff had king jack. So we just had to fade a nine or a jack, of course, apart from the draws. But that does not happen since the big blend would take it down with the turn nine. And let's move on with eight, seven off, five deuce suited, six, five off, eight deuce off, seven, five off, ace deuce off, king, nine off. Now we are in the button with a playable one, king, 10 off, hijack limps. I make it $15. I get a small blind and hijack the call. Flop is a uh, decent ace, 10 deuce. So middle pair, king kicker. I bet $20 since I felt like it's good a lot here and like that I could check back the turn and try to get the showdown after that and get value from worse tens. Maybe some pocket pairs that don't believe me or draws. So that is why I do and this is small blind calls. Turn's not the best, a five of diamonds. So it brings in the flush and when the small blind leads for $35, this, this looks like a flush and we're not even beating top pair. So I'm just folding. We move on to the cutoff to another playable one, nine, seven suited. I make it $12. Not a button three bets to 25. And again, three bets in one three look really strong, but especially when he makes it small like this. But the thing is, when they make it this small, they're trying to give you a price to call. And they are, since I think I can make a profitable call for $13. If he has a overpair and a flop top two trips or some straight or flush, I'll be able to make enough money to make $13 worth calling pre-flop. So that is what I do. I call flop though, six, three, deuce. So absolutely nothing. I have two over cards, but not even a spade. I check and now he checks back. Turn is eight and yeah, not loving it here. I just think he three bet pre-flop. So maybe it's pocket control with the over pair. And sometimes, especially in one three, just people like to check back nutted hands. And maybe he just has a nut flush here with ace king of spades. Or maybe he just has, I don't know, just strong hands that is just trying to play tricky. So I think I should still be checking and just check calling maybe now with our open ended. But in the moment, I felt like maybe he could have done it with ace king. And if we get that to fold, that is definitely a win. So I do make it $30. And he clicks it back to 60. So 
when he min three bets us preflop and then clicks it back on the turn this just looks so stupid strong maybe we're just drawing dead so even though it's just 30 dollars, i'm just not calling so i do fold and he shows his pocket kings with the king of spades so yeah definitely interesting line by him that definitely gets max value out of us since if he were to three bet bigger preflop i'm just folding and if he bets a flop i'm folding so what can I say? He got max value out of us. Let's move on. Jack six off, seven deuce off, a seven off. And now our table gets called for the promotion. So if we get the highest card of the table, we will be able to spin the wheel. I think it was today. But first play is ace of hearts and we get a seven of hearts. So that will not be good enough. So first promo will not be coming our way. Moving on to Jack nine suited. That is pretty, but you know, and under the gun. So I fold. Down to be able to have a queen six off. Of course, we're folding, but I just want to share. Things are starting to get crazy now. Players are going all in. In this hand, three players are all in blind. This one guy sat down and they just started gambling with another one. They just keep on asking each other. Let's just go in blind. Let's go in blind. So things may be, get a little crazy. Usually if they want to do it once, I'll just be like, fine, just gamble. I fold, but... It seems like they want to keep on doing it. So if we just end up in a spot that they just keep on going on in blind and we have a strong hand, we will get involved. So let's keep that in mind. Things make it crazy. Moving on to 5-3 suited. Now we got ace-9 suited in the cutoff. Low jack limps. So I'm going to get $15. Big blind and low jack calls. Flop for jack-9. So decent. Second pair, ace kicker. Which checks to me. I don't think it's good enough to bet. It's multi-way. So I check. Checks around. Turn is a 7 which checks again to me, I think now I could start betting for protection and value. I think a jack would have bet on a flop or a turn. So I think most of the time I am good. I'm going to get value from worse jacks or draws. I'm going to get $25 and a big blind calls. River is a queen. And maybe if an overcard didn't show up, it'd be good enough to go for value in the river. But with a queen, I don't think it is. So it goes check, check. He shows an eight. I show and he mucks. So Pot coming our way. Very next hand, we get another one that we will play. 10 9 suited in the hijack under and two limps. I make it $15 and get the button and under and two to call. Flop 6 7 4. So, not the worst. Again, two over cards, a gut shot, and a backdoor flush drop. But this board is just way better for the other players. They've just been super action. They could have plenty of two pairs. They could already have a straight. They could have sets. And I'm not loving it. I'm just. Again, just better for them than me. So I do decide to check. And now the button bets. And it's big. $35. Other than two calls and back to me. And I was planning on checking to check call. But he made it a huge size. Other than two calls. And it's not loving it. I just have a gut shot. And there's a flush draw. So if there wasn't a flush draw, I most likely would call. And it's a spot that, sure, I have two over cards. But if I hit one of them, that brings in a lot of straight draws. So in a spot that if I hit my overcard for top pair, I may still not be good. If I hit my straight and it's a diamond, I may still not be good either. I decide to just let it go, but no worries. No, we don't have to wait long for another good hand. Since very next hand in the low jack, I got ace jack suited. Button straddle is going on under the limps, under the one limps as well. So I'm going to get $35 and get the small blind under the call. Flop, nine deuce, nine. So... Two of a card, backed or flush draw, not the worst. The small blind tanks for a little while before checking. So does under the gun. And the small blind, I haven't seen him before. You see, like a recreational. So it just really seemed like he was considering leading on this flop and not like he was putting a show to try to make it look like that. It did seem genuine. And under the gun is a pretty tight player. And I raised pretty big. So it was just a raise, but it almost felt like a three bet since it's a big size for one three. So it just felt like especially small blind could decent amount of time have pocket pairs and yeah it just felt like a spot that wasn't get too many folds especially against two players so i decided to check back hopefully get a good turn card that it is not since it's a seven the small blind checks now under gun bets a hundred dollars that is massive so yeah i'm not calling with my ace high i just let it go not a big blind jams for 170 so i think my read was correct about his take on the flop under the calls, river is a nine and small blind had pocket seven. So he turned the full house that I don't think I would have got the fold on the flop and he will take it down. Let's move on. Four, six off, seven, three off. Now we are in under the gun with pocket eights. But this straddle is going on, so I make it $20. Under than one, under than two calls. Not a low jack, three bets, $75. Small blind calls. And this is a pretty shitty spot with my pocket aids because the low jack is a very aggressive player. So I think it could be burning a flop a lot. 
So I can't just be calling here and folding if I don't hit my eight because set mining here is just not portable since I got to call $55 and again, 15X, 15 times 55. I don't know exactly what it is at the moment, but it's definitely a lot more than I have in front of me. So I'd be very optimistic. So it just felt like a spot where I got to fold or I got to rip it all in. Because again, if I don't flop an eight and it's a 10, it's a jack, he's, I think he's betting with almost everything. So I consider briefly jamming, but again, jamming over 100 big limited pocket eights, I just think I'm only gonna get called by hands. I'm just way behind and maybe ace king or ace queen, but those are best case scenarios and I'm flipping against those. So I just felt this is not the great spot. Let's just give up those $20 and fold. And if you were curious, flop was queen high, the low jack bet $110 every fold and he had ace jack off. He will take that one down being aggressive. Let's move on to another promotion we call for the table. So let's see if we get lucky this time. But nope, we get a six of hearts. That is definitely not going to be good enough. So let's move on to a lot of garbage. Get ready. Jack A off, six, five off, seven, three off, queen, four suited, ten, nine off, six, five off, seven, five suited, king, seven off, ten, five off, nine, four off, three, four off, king, five off, ten, four off, eight, four off, and three deuce off. All right, little bathroom break. Uh, we had a great start and it kind of went downhill from there. Um, we're up, I think, like 250, 260 at a point, like very beginning. Now we're up like 80 something. That's still fine. Been playing two hours, one three. Um, yeah, the game is just absolutely crazy. These guys are just going all in blind. Uh, a, a good amount, like at least three of these guys are just wanting to gamble, just go crazy. So a lot of potential. Definitely playing bigger than your average 1-3 uh, with the straddles going on. Um, sadly, we just haven't been able to win any of the straddle pots. That's always a bummer. Um, it's part of the bad appearances when you're winning the regular uh, hands and you're losing the straddles. But um, we've got plenty of time to go. I'm feeling good, good table. And um, yeah, let's just take a little break and head back. Hopefully we aren't card dead for too much longer so we get some more hands and let's keep on playing. When we get back from the break, we see the hand that got the session starting good. Pocket threes in the hijack. Button straddle is going on under on limbs. And honestly, I should still be raising here in the moment. I just felt this table was very call happy and I didn't want to make a massive pot, even though my pocket threes tend to hit sets pretty often. Still, most of the time I won't. So I decide to go down the passive right, try to see a cheap flop, eye limb, cut off limb, small blind and big blind call, button checks, flop, jack, jack, four. So we did not hit a set this time. Jack set a button who bets $15. And uh, yeah, so multi-way, it's even he's, though he's the last to talk, this looks super strong. So when it falls on me, I just fold. And indeed he does show a jack. So trips will be good. He'll take it down. Very next hand, we see a better pocket pair. Pocket tens in the low jack. I make it $12 and only the cutoff calls. Flop three, ace four. So not the worst, this one over card. And I think he'd be calling with plenty of worse hands. So let's bet, I make it $15 and he collects it to 30. Weird, weird spot, but what am I going to do? These raises just tend to look really strong. Sometimes maybe he's raising the check back to turn, but it's an ace high board. I have plenty of aces myself, so I decide this time just to let it go. Not sure what it is since I don't see clicks like this in position very often. Moving on to jack four off, six dudes off. Now in a big blind with jack five suited under the one low jack small blind. All of them limp and call. Happy to see a flop and happy that I do flop. Four, six, deuce. What a big blind special. We flop the jack high flush and any three of clubs gives us a straight flush. I check and we see some great news. And under the one bets $15. This is one of the crazy players. I was just going all in blind. He's just playing pretty aggressive. It seems like he wants to gamble. Low jack calls and especially with the call in between. I'm not slow playing. I check raises $60. 
On to another one who does not call. He forbids to 170 falls back to me. And yeah, if he has a better flush, he has it. I'm never falling to this guy. He is super action and just has 88 more dollars behind. So there's one move to do. I rip it all in. He doesn't seem very happy. He does call though. And he flips over 5-3 with the three of clubs. He had a straight and he thought he had some outs with the three of clubs, but he does not since I have the five of clubs. He does not have outs with the straight flush. So he is drawing dead. And thank God for that because turn is a deuce. Remember, it's another deuce. So any six, any four, anything that paired, any pair would have beat us on this run out. So thankfully, he had a straight and we do still beat that and we will take it down. And with that, we are up $321. Feels good since things were going the wrong direction, but we are now back on track up over a buy in. Let's try to keep it going. 10 7 off, Queen 6 suited, 8 3 off, and now we look down at a pretty one. Pocket jacks in hijack, low jack makes it $12, and we're 3 bidding. I make it 36. Folds a big man who cold calls is the same player we just played against that we stacked, and so does a low jack. So, flop, an amazing dream. 6 jack, 5, we flop, top set. Checks to me and let's put out a C bet. I want to make a huge flopping top set. There's a good amount of draws though, but I decided to make it on the smaller side. It is a three bet pot. I make it $35 and only the big blank calls. Turn, not what I was hoping for. It's a king. And when it checks to me, I just really wasn't loving this card. I'm flop I was blocking top pair on the flop. So if he was calling, I mean if you had a six or a five, when another overcard comes to the board, I just don't think it's calling and very likely, especially after calling a three bet, cold calling one, he could have suited hands. It was a spot that I felt like hands are common to flop that are worse or just folding and he may have a flush that is calling. So I decided to pocket show a little bit and check back. Where it is a three. And he bets $105. He basically bets pot. That looks pretty strong, especially when a flush comes in. But what are you going to do? Again, this player is super action, so I'm never folding my set against him. I do call, and he flips over pocket fours. So our set of jacks is good and happy I checked back the turn because I think that's his folding. He called a flop and decided to turn it into a bluff on the river. That is actually a pretty cool move, honestly. But hey, we had a way too strong of a hand. We got lucky that it was an easy call for us in this spot. And now we are up $528. Let's go. Definitely amazing. And it's still pretty early on. So very promising session. Let's focus and keep it going. We're Jack 10 suited in the low jack. I make it $12. Cut off calls. And on the big blind, same player as before that had the pocket fours. Rips it all in for $100. And I think he literally could be doing this with any two cards, especially after losing those pots. But I have Jack High. He could be, if he has any queen, any king, any ace, any small pocket pair, he's ahead of us. So even though it's a pretty hand, I just don't think he's doing great going all in. So I just fold, even though I think he's doing it with any two cards. Very next hand though, again, no need to wait. King, queen, off, and under than one. Under than limbs, I make it $15. And I get the small blind, big blind, and under than the call. Flop, three, ace, jack. So we have a gut shot. But so multi-way, even though the board is better for me, I'm just playing straight up. I check, checks around, turn is a nine. Now the big blind bet's $15. And yeah, this one of the spots, it sets a small bet. I'm just getting a really great price to hit my gut shot. So I have very small odds to actually ha hit the best hand. But I'm getting such an amazing price. If I just call 15 and I hit the 10, especially if it's not a spades, I could win a massive pot if they have two pairs or better. So I do call with the expectation to mostly just lose. And so does a small blind. And we go to the river. That is not a 10, Sally. It's a 9. So when the big blind bet's now $50, we just all fold. Moving on to king six off. Now we are in the big blind. We're getting a good amount of hands nonstop. Pocket sevens. Cut off a very tight player, makes it $20, and I call, flop, 10, 9, 4. I check, and he bets $20, and yeah, two of cards, and again, this player is pretty tight, so I just fold. Very next hand, once again, we got a pocket pair, pocket sixes, but it makes it $10, and only I call. And we just end up checking it down when flop comes, 5, 8, queen, check, check, turn a jack, check, check, rivers a 7, check, check, and we are good against ace, 10 off, so thankfully... In no moment, he tried to bluff it and let's get the showdown and take it out with our pocket sixes. 
Very next hand, once again, we get no break. Queen Jack suited in the button. I make it $12, but no action this time since the blinds fold. Queen deuce off. And once again, we get our favorite number, pocket threes. I think before I said that was my favorite hand, that was definitely not what I was trying to say. I was trying to say my favorite number. There's definitely plenty of favorite hands I'd like to see before this one, but I'm still happy to see it. There's two limpers, and once again, I decided to limp behind, and <laughs> I feel like I'm insecure here tr trying to justify it over and over again, but I just don't like limps. I think it's not a profitable play. I try my best not to do it, but once a while in specific spots where a very call happy table, I'm just happy to try to get cheap to a flop in my small pocket pairs. So this is one of those cases I limp behind and definitely doing this is super exploitable. If anyone is paying any attention towards me and I limp, it's obvious I have a small pocket pair, but I do not worry about this in these games. I don't think anyone is going to catch up to it or really notice it. So hey, if you're ever playing against me in a live game and I limp, I think you have a pretty good idea of what I may have. <laughs> so yeah, with that, let's see a flop. That, no three, sadly. King, eight, nine. I'm going to be playing these for $12. I'm just folding. Seven, four off. Ten, five suited. Ace, three off. King, seven off in a big blind. I raise to be able to chop it up against a limper. King, six off. A do suited. Now we're on the cutoff with a pretty one. Queen Jack suited in the cutoff. There's four limbers, so let's punish them. Make it big. $30. And one of the button calls that I was definitely surprised. Flop 844. So not the worst. Two of the cards and a backdoor flush draw. And it was only a single raise pot pre-flop, but I made it really big. So it felt almost like a three-bit pot. Him calling right after me. Looked decently strong. I feel like it'd be a lot of pocket pairs or just some decently strong ace high just broadway cards and on this board i think i could get most of those to fold by the river i could bet here a little bit on a bigger side and get try to get aces king highs to fold and if it does have pocket pairs we may get good run out to try to bluff him off of it and one thing i saw is that he checked his cards on this flop so i just think that mostly means he doesn't have spades he may be looking for one of them and in the moment it just made me feel he wasn't that strong that's just the read I had in the moment. So let's try to get them to fold. I make it $35 and no luck yet since he does call. Turns another eight. That was definitely interesting. Um, I didn't think he had many eights himself after he called me pre-flop. I felt like my range is definitely a little wider than his. I could be trying to squeeze. I could have eight, nine. I could have eight, seven suited, ace, eight suited. But him calling the bet... It just looked a little stronger. So for I just didn't think he had that many eights in the moment. So I felt like if he had pocket pairs, I will call once and now fold. But at the same time, if I had aces, if I had kings, if I had queens, I wouldn't bet that big since I may be worried about an eight and I'd be trying to get value from worse. So I make it $60. And sadly, it does not work out since once again, he calls. River's a three. And yeah, once I get called twice, I think the turn bet looked pretty strong. It just looked like I had over pairs, maybe even an eight that was trying to get value from worse. I don't know. I don't think he's calling when the turn pairs again with a flush draw. So maybe he does have an eight. Maybe he had a four and he was calling super loose. I don't know. I decide just to give up. I check. He thinks a little bit. He says, I can't do it. Checks back. And we are no good against pocket queens. So damn. He was definitely way stronger than I expected. I thought that would mostly three bet pre flop, and uh, yeah, not sure if I would have got that to fold on the river, but uh, we did not try, so we'll never find out. And he will take this one down. Our bluff does not work out. That takes a little chunk of our profit, but we're still doing pretty good. Let's move on. Ace deuce off, three eight suited, five ten off, and now we look down at another playable one in the big blind. Ace queen off. There's two limpers. Hijack makes it $15. Falls to me. And this is definitely a player dependent spot because the hijack, he was one that was limping a good amount. So him raising the 15, two limpers. I just think it looks pretty strong that if I three bet, I'm most likely just going to call by better. Maybe some pocket pairs. But apart from that, it almost feels like I'm bluffing with the ace queen off. Again, this is just one three where people just limp a lot. So when it raises, it looks stronger. So in a big line this time, I do decide just to call. Limpers call. Flop. 10 deuce four. So... Yeah, we got some backdoors, two overcards, but when under than one leads for $15, under than two jumps for 18 hijack calls, 
yeah, not loving it. So I just fold. So let's move on. King, queen off in the small blind. We chop it up when it falls to us. King, seven off. Now playing three-handed, the table was about to break, but another player shows up. So we keep on going for seven off. Now we are five-handed. We got pocket tens in a small blind. There's a button straddle. Under that makes it $12. That definitely is really small. 2x since the straddle is going on. And it's a button straddle. So it doesn't feel that strong. This kind of feels like it's trying to get cheap to a flop. Unless you didn't notice straddle was going on. That does happen sometimes. But anyways, when the cutoff calls on to us, I'm going to three bet in this spot. I make it $50 and only the cutoff calls. So heads up to a flop that comes queen, five, four. So... Not the worst, it's one over card and in a three bet pot on this board, I'm just gonna put out a small C bet. I'm still beating plenty of hands. Hopefully he does not have a queen. I don't think he has any pocket pairs better than mine after just flatting in the cutoff. Sure, he could have sets. Maybe he's just calling with ace queen, definitely on one three. People don't three bet that often with a hand, king queen, queen jack. Uh, but altogether, he, he has plenty of other hands that we're beating and we need protection and we go for value. And again, just putting out a small C bet all the time after three betting preflop. So I make it $30 and we see the pretty good news when he folds. Let's keep it going in the button now with ace five suited, under the gun, cut off limb. So I make it $20 and get a big land under the call. Flop decent, nine, ace, 10. So top pair. Pretty bad kicker, but some backdoors to go on with it too. And when they check, I'm gonna put out a small C bit. I'm gonna get $20, and once again, they fold. Moving on, nine, eight off, 10 do suited. Try to be able to have a king seven off, limps around. So I see a free flop that I miss. So when someone bets, I fold. Now when a small blind with king, queen off, and once again, folds to us. So we chop it up, 10, five off, 10, six off, nine, seven off, queen, seven off to the big line. Once again, we see a free flop, and once again, we fold to a bet. 8-3 suited in a small blind. Now let's play another pocket pair. Pocket six is in the button. Under the gun, cut off limp. So I make it $20 and only under the gun calls. Flop, five, queen, 10. So, I mean, what usually happens when you have a small pocket pair, a lot of overcards. And when he leads for $25, yeah, um, sure, he may have a draw, but even draws are doing amazing against us. And the draws are probably flush draw or straight draw with two overcards to our pocket pair. So, or A, he has a pair better than ours, and to that, we just have two outs. Or B, he has a combo draw that has a bunch of outs against our small pocket pair that if they bet again on a turn, even if they don't hit, we're just going to have to fold. So, in a spot that we're not doing very good, I just fold. So, let's move on to a good amount of garbage. Three deuce off, under the straddle, we have 10, seven off. We do see a free flop, but again, we miss and fold. Nine, six off. Now, once again, they call us for the promotions, uh, but not running good with them since we get a six of hearts, so no sweat. And while we get through another big amount of garbage, if you made it this far, as usual, I'd highly appreciate it if you could show some love. As I say every time, these are a lot of work, but I love doing them. Definitely, they get a way more positive feedback in the old ones and i just enjoy doing them more like this i think it just brings more of a story to the session i think i could bring you guys along a lot more than just some random hands that i used to do so altogether, i love making them like this it is a lot more work but it is worth it so if you could help me out and show some love by liking commenting and uh if you want to go as far as sharing it of course i wouldn't hate that either and yeah, let's move on to the first beautiful premium of the session, Pocket Kings in a button under the limb, so I make it $15. And now the big blind three bets to 35 and yeah, on to us, and you'll be thinking, let's four bet all the time, but these are interesting spots the big blind he is a very happy player to see a flop so him three betting looks crazy strong and he made it so small this looks like he wants to get a call so again i understand you should be four betting especially i'm in the button i have a wide range the big blind could be three betting me wide i should always be four betting i understand but this is very different this is a very different dynamics going on with this player so I decide to just call because my thought, I do think sometimes you could have worse hands, but I felt if I four bet, I'm going to get all of those to fold and I may just end up only with aces and queens. So I do decide to call. Let's see a flop that comes deuce, eight, 10. So looking pretty good. And we have the king of hearts. He bets $50 and I briefly considered raising, but again, he made it pretty big. So sure, he could still have aces here. That's what I was feeling he could have after three betting so small pre-flop. So I still take the safe route and call. 
turn is a three and once again he bets fifty dollars that makes me feel a lot better i was thinking he'd make it bigger if he had aces trying to get it all in by the river so i considered jamming here but we just have 150 dollars behind so it's easily could get all in by the river even if i just call here since i am in position and maybe he could still have aces this player has a very different style to play than you mostly see he does very weird lines that a lot of times i just don't know what he has so i do think he could still have pocket aces here and uh, yeah with that in mind i do call rivers pretty good another three and once again he bets fifty dollars and i was planning on mostly just calling honestly because again i think he's mostly just three betting pre up with aces that's how tight i think this player's three bet range is especially that small out of position but when he makes it fifty dollars he just has a hundred behind I just feel like I'd be such a nit. Once he bets the same size three times in a row, I just feel like now he's given himself a price to get the showdown out of position. And I think that's mostly, definitely, I think maybe could have jacks and queens. I was thinking more likely this is just jacks that was trying to get a heads up. I didn't want to make the pot too big. So I almost called, but at the end of the day, I just felt like it's too tight. I still get value from the queens and jacks. I don't think they're going to fold. Or maybe he played weirdly with like ace 10. So... At the end of the day, I do decide to rip it all in, and he snap calls and shows us the bad news when he indeed he flips over pocket aces. Yeah, um, so we almost got away without going broke, but his triple barrel for the same size just made us want to go for value and jam, and it is what it is. I mean, when you go for value by jamming or raising, you're not always going to be good. Sometimes you're going to value own yourself like I did in this spot. I still don't hate it, honestly. I think most of the time when players make the same size, they don't have aces. They're just trying to get the showdown. But this time was not the case since he did have the pocket aces that will beat our pocket kings. And that takes a huge chunk of our profit. But at least we're still in the green with 104. So let's move on to 5-4 off, 5 deuce off. 3-7 suited, now the big blame is 7-5 off, 5 deuce off, jack 9 off, now we are in the cutoff for 8-6 suited, so good enough in this position, so I make it $12, I get a small blind and big blind to call, flop, jack, 3-5, so we got some backdoors going on for us, I definitely consider betting, but when a small blind leads for $20, yeah, um, I don't know, I would have bet myself since I got a lot of backdoors, but... This is a decent size. This feels like top pair a lot. So I decided just to let it go. Now we are in the cutoff with the pocket threes. Straddle is going on. So we get $20 and just get under the gun to call. Flop, four, four, jack. So not the worst, again, for a pocket three since almost always, always, <laughs> there'll be over cards unless the flop is deuce, deuce, deuce. So altogether, not the worst. So when he checks, I bet $20 and he calls. Turn is another four. So that's not the worst. And he checks now, I think... I'm happy to try to get the show down. Betting again doesn't make too much sense. So I do check back. River is a queen. Now he bets $20 that, yeah, definitely looks like a jack that's doing a block bet trying to get the show down. So maybe I should raise here representing a queen myself that I could have. I don't think he's betting the size with a queen that often. But I think my pocket threes could be good here. I think I'd be just calling pretty wide on the flop. He's not believing me. Maybe with an ace or a king or I don't know. Altogether, I'm just getting such a good price. I don't have to be good that often. So I do call. And thankfully, I did not try to bluff since he had a queen. Yet queen jack, that is definitely better than our little fool house. And he will take this one down. Let's move on to king jack suited in under the gun. I make it $12 to get a cut off on small blind call. Flop, eight, ace, deuce, and once again, they lead. Small blind needs for $12, and um, yeah, honestly, I don't know that much these spots. Maybe I should be raising more when players lead against me. This, this spot, I think I have plenty of aces myself, but altogether, I wouldn't hate it. I'd consider a lot more raising for sure if I had the front door flush draw, but I got some back doors going on for us, but altogether, in a moment, my king high, I decided just to let it go. Let's move on to 9-3 off. Once again, we get called for the promotion. So let's see if we could get the highest card this time. Nope, once again, not much of a sweat since we get the nine of spades. So looks like the promos are not going our way today. But no worries, since we get a pretty one now, ace, queen off in the small blind. Straddle is going on. There's three limpers, so let's make it big. I make it $45 and just get under the call. So heads up to our flop. That's pretty nice. Queen, eight, five, top pair, top kicker. Looking good. So let's bet big. I make $60 and he folds. But still a nice pot. Let's move on to eight, seven off. 
five, six off, jack eight off. And now it's our turn to have the beautiful pocket aces in the hijack. I'm gonna lay them so I get $15. The thing calls and now the small blind rips it all in for $205. Pretty massive jam. And of course, we call and we see the good news. We flips over pocket king. So, yeah, that's how variances work. Sometimes you have kings, sometimes they have it, and you have aces. Now we just need to hold, please. Flop comes nine jack ten. So, yeah, not loving it since now he has extra four outs for the queen. So, please. No king, no queen. Let's the variances be on our side this time. Turn is a deuce. River is a queen. <sighs> yeah. So just like that, after being in the green, almost the whole session doing pretty good. We're up like 400, even 500 at a time. At the very end of the session, last hour in, we get kings against aces and then... We get aces against kings, but he rivers a straight. And yeah, poker can just be absolutely brutal. And uh, it just makes it worse that this is the first vlog that I'm doing this to try to see what my hour can be at i was feeling amazing i felt like you know it was looking like i was going to start strong with a good hourly and after how the months has been going this felt pretty good and that's why you should not get excited when you're up because when the money is on the table it could leave at any moment and um yeah this is how it's been a lot when most of the time money should come our way it does not but anyways let's move on to four seven off 6-3 off, 10-9 off in a big blind. We see a free flop and we miss. We fold. King deuce off, not a button with jack 10 off. I make it $12 and the blinds fold. 7-5 off, 7-9 off, some raises. So we fold. Jack 8 off. Moving on to 5-7 off, not a small blind with ace 9 off. The limps around, so I call. We miss the flop, so we check. And when someone bets, we just let it go. 9-5 suited, 6 do suited, 9-6 off. And yeah, that is it. I was definitely not in the best mood after this. I decided just to call it. So not what we were hoping, but it is what it is. Poker is uh, amazing and brutal. Just depends on the day. Let's just rack up and cash out and talk about the session. gonna do um poker can be brutal and um that's how it was today it was going really good till a point i was up like over 400 bucks in one three pretty amazing and um then kings against aces that took most of the profit and then aces against kings that <laughs> put us in the red since we lost with the aces and um, we lost with the kings and um yeah with that we start the month uh, minus uh, 31 an hour since we were down 140 dollars and um yeah trying to stay focused trying to stay positive um uh, things have been uh, pretty brutal like this the last six months um and recently i try to just you know i try to think as positive as possible just all in is pretty flop i'm i think i'm down eight out of the last nine or nine out of the last ten of them ahead every single time a lot of them are kind of like flips but um still yeah you know that's just a lot of money that should usually be coming my way that does not like four hundred dollars today a little four hundred dollars today with my aces against his kings that most of the time um we would have had a profit today but uh we do not so um yeah all I can do is focus, and uh, next week I'll be filming again. I'll be doing it. I'll be vlogging every week this month to have four, and like that, we could have a whole view of uh, how one three goes and what the hourly ends up. Hopefully, when I film next week, we will have an hourly in the green. And um, yeah, that is it. Appreciate everyone who uh, watched the vlog. As usual, if you could like, comment, and subscribe, and if you want to. Turn on the notifications. I'm pretty sure YouTube has those for when uh, next part two of this little series comes out. Um, that's awesome too. So anyways, see you guys next time.